Hey, it's Ramsey Dewey over here in Shanghai, China. Welcome to another edition of Q&A with the Coach. Today, Little Jimmy 835 sends in this question. He says, I particularly like your videos where you have broken down charlatan martial arts styles and techniques, or Krav Makido, as you've called it, and shown how ineffective they are when put to the test. Yeah, man, that's that, that's a simple thing anybody can do, right? Somebody teaches you a self-defense technique, which they promise this will save your life in the case of violence. How about go test it out in the gym, at the very least against mild resistance, to see whether or not you were able to do that thing when the other guy is not cooperating. Very simple. Little Jimmy goes on to say, I find these videos of yours both entertaining and informative. However, a defense I often hear from people who practice these less than effective techniques is, well, this would work on an untrained fighter. So my question is, do you think there is any truth to these claims? Obviously, it's better to have effective training, but do you think a person trained in one of these fake or less effective martial arts styles would at least have the edge over a completely untrained person? Or would it make no difference outside of giving them, giving them false confidence? Or is it possible that someone can be so poorly trained that they would actually be worse off than if they had of had no training whatsoever? For example, in your experience as a coach, have you ever found yourself needing a student to unlearn bad habits they picked up from a phony style before you could teach them the correct method? Cheers and thanks for your time. Our little Jimmy, that's a, that's a really interesting set of questions. Oh, man, I almost forgot to thank my sponsor, no -gi, BJJ Gear com. Go check them out. They make awesome rash guards like this one with these... Japanese rat monsters having an MMA fight on it, and a bunch of other great designs, too. Go check them out. Links in the description below, including my discount code for 10% off everything. All right, back on. Back to that question. So we got these fake styles, right? Or we have these less effective martial arts styles. Let's call them that. Less effective ones, right? And they're often defended with this idea, well, against an untrained thug who doesn't know any martial arts, it's better than nothing. Is it really, though? Who is going to attack you on the streets? If somebody singles you out, it is because they feel they have a very distinct advantage. It is because they feel they are bigger, stronger, more aggressive than you, meaner than you, perhaps better armed than you. Maybe they have more friends than you, right? So they feel they have an advantage because they wouldn't attack you if they didn't feel they have that. Who are these psychopaths who are going to instigate an aggravated assault on you on the streets without provocation? They're going to be very aggressive people. And who signs up for these wimpy, less effective martial arts class? Well, people who, who are not very aggressive. People who are generally physically weak and timid and not outgoing. The type of people who are generally preyed upon by these sorts of psychopaths who would single them out. And if they're learning something like, well, all you need to do is put your hand right here and your foot right there. And then you have an aggressive psychopath come out and just start wailing on you with haymakers. And you've never experienced that situation before. You're going to be in shock. You're going to get punched a lot. And you will not be in a position to put your hand right there and just put your foot right there and just do this and just do that because it's just not that simple. Violence is super chaotic. And in order to understand chaos, you must experience chaos. That's why you got to spar. That's why you got to roll. It's why you have to put yourself against a live resisting person who is not cooperating. That doesn't mean you have to get into a bunch of fights, although it certainly doesn't 
make you worse unless you sustain a bunch of brain damage. But you got to spar. You have to experience violence to understand violence. You must find yourself in the middle of chaos to understand chaos. Have I ever had to untrain people of bad habits? Yeah. Yeah. All the time. Now, I try not to do that because often people will come into my gym with a, uh, a deep understanding of a martial arts system that I don't do. And a much more effective way to train that person is to train them to use the strengths that that particular style brings out instead of saying, well, that's not the way I do it, so let's all do it like me. Now, not everything they do is perfect, so I don't emphasize that. Instead, I focus on what is good. What is going to work in a cage fight? What is going to work when push comes to shove? Like that one thing you do, man, from that, from your style right there, from Bagua Zhang or Xin Yi or Tai Chi or, or whatever it is that you do that you don't ordinarily see in a cage fight. That one thing, okay? That one Wing Chun technique that you do, that you already know, that you're familiar with, that is in your muscle memory. Here's how we can weaponize that more effectively. Now, if they come from a system where they never spar, where they never have a, a coach who has experienced fighting or violence of any type, and this guy is promising them the moon, if they just get their form just right and put their hands right here and just put their feet right there, is just... just giving them a lie, you know, that's, that's really all it is. What makes the difference right here? 